Hey everybody, hope everyone's doing well. Um, if you've been following the blog for a while, you know that I, over the last couple of years, have kind of grown in a bit of an obsession with uh, a specific um, subset of vintage pilot pens, um, referred to just usually as the striped series. Uh, and so some history behind these is that they were manufactured um, in the 70s, so probably early 70s, um, and then some of the steel other other models were, were manufactured up until like the very, very early 80s. Um, but these pens are generally running about, you know, 40 to 45 years old or so. Um, the, there, there's not many pens that I've kind of found a need to really just go nuts on collecting. Um, but this is a series that, um, ab about two years ago, I kind of caught the bug and definitely wanted to try and collect them all, um, so to speak. But, so there's, there's quite a few in the series and, um, what I thought I would do is just kind of take, take us through, you know, each one, you know, as far as one by one and just kind of describe what each of them are to get, um, to get a feel for it. So... Um, I'm using some artificial light right now, which um, maybe isn't my favorite, but you know, with uh, I got some small kids, and it makes it kind of difficult to <laughs> to to do things when they are quiet. So, and they happen to be asleep right now, so it makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so um, just to kind of for introductions uh, to the pens, there's um, this one. We'll be kind of getting focus in and out here to make sure that everybody can see. So this one is was kind of one of the first ones that I was really, really intrigued with getting. Um, it's called the the Mayu, so M Y U. Not sure if that's exactly right, if I'm saying it right, but um, this one most people are familiar with, like maybe the M ninety that's been talked about a lot. Um, but this is kind of one of those integral nibs that is just super cool um so like this whole solid area is one one piece um so this striped version um i initially got a mayu that was just regular stainless and this one just kind of you know anyway this was maybe like grail pen 1.0 and then as you go a little bit deeper into the set uh, it gets a little bit crazier so that, this one's just really, really neat. Um, anyway, so this one's like, I don't carry this one very often, but it is one that I, I enjoy quite a bit. Okay. All right, next one I'm gonna talk about is the, uh, it's called the Pilot Custom. And what it is, is it's actually, uh, it's also stainless steel. It's more of a full size uh, fountain pen. Um, so it's, it's pretty good size. So it's got, um, it's not like solid steel, kind of like the other one, but it has kind of this resin barrel and then it has an 18 karat gold nib on it. Um, really neat. Um, so kind of like a thumbnail nib. These are pretty uh, prevalent. You can usually find these customs for not like super crazy uh, expensive. You know, I mean, for an 18 karat vintage nib, uh, these gen generally tend to run about, I don't know, 180 to 200 bucks, depending on the condition you find them in. Um, but pretty cool. Um, I like the customs uh, quite a bit. Um, now this, if you notice, is a is a black stripe version. So some other Kind of information about the stripe series is they not only had the black which is the most prevalent um, but there's also a series that's considered a bit more on the rare side which is really just like an unpainted black one um, but they refer to it as the white stripe so most of these um, pens or things that I, that you can find um, you can actually get them in like a white stripe um, which again, is just more along the lines of like, it's just um, the, the black, they never painted it, but 
for some reason they refer to it as the white stripe. Uh, those are a little bit more rare to find, but this one, if you notice, has got a little bit of kind of chunky stuff going on on the clip. Um, so it's not like in perfect shape or anything, um, but it's, it, you know, it's good enough it dish, a good enough example of it that I, I picked it up and I wanted to add it to the collection. Um, so there's a variety of other things uh, as well that you could get. Um, like there's a there's a mechanical pencil that came in as a set. Um, it only came in a .5. They do have some other variations of this in like a brown or a maroon color I think in the striping. I've never actually, I've seen pictures of them but never actually seen one. Um, to buy because I probably would have got it already, but you know, just kind of neat. So that that st that stainless um, barrel with the striping in it. So just kind of neat. Um, they also had another pen, like a little capped pen. Let me focus here real quick. So this one is kind of a really interesting little guy. So not real big. Like if you notice, it's like kind of a Kind of a tiny little pen, um, but it what it is is it's like it's a uh, it's a fine like a fine liner type of refill. So it takes like a it takes like a um, like a felt porous tip, you know, like a like any sort of fine liner refill. But um, so anyway, yeah. So it just you know you can take it apart and pull the refills out. But um, this one I thought was going to be really hard for me to find, um, just because like they didn't really. You know, I looked for these for probably, you know, a year. And uh, then all of a sudden one popped up on eBay and I got it for like a smoking deal. Like, I think this one I paid like $10 for or something ridiculously cheap. Um, there's also a um, really kind of interesting, because I have two, two examples of this one. Let me see if I can focus out a little farther here for us. Um, I have two examples of this. It's, uh, it's a striped ballpoint. But if you notice, um, these are technically two different sizes. So I don't know if these were made in different time periods. Um, this one I got for like, I think it was like $4 or something like that because it's missing the clip, you notice. But I wanted it as an example because um, I thought maybe I could get a donor clip from another thing like a pencil. Um, but it's the same size, so these probably came at one point like in a set so if you notice but then this one is the same style but it's you know it's it's considerably bigger um, you know really good just solid click um, it takes like your standard pilot um, ballpoint refills you know I mean like that's one thing I love about pilot is they literally have like not changed their refills or cartridges or things for like 50 years, you know, so it's pretty neat like I, so I could go, you know, I could order a a pilot refill You know that will just like literally pop right in here Like I wouldn't have a problem You're still using this pen and it's like 50 years old or 40 years old Okay, and then the last one um, There's been kind of a lot of buzz about this pen for a while here and uh Pretty, pretty well deserved, I would probably say. Um, so this was the last one. I want to clear all this other stuff out of here so I can kind of give it front and center. This is the, the last one that I actually was able to obtain in the collection. So this was kind of the more elusive um, pen, but it's the Pilot Capless in the striped. Um, yeah, so this this one has been on my radar for probably about two years now and one that I've kind of been always keeping an eye out for and Just never really had an opportunity to find one for what I felt was like a reasonable price um, But then this one came up and I thought well Better better jump on it and see what happens. So uh, really just kind of a cool stunning like it, it honestly it's almost kind of ugly like I know that sounds really really silly like because I uh, you know it's not a cheap pen but um, it, it definitely is kind of like awkward like it's got some really weird lines and transitions and it's totally different than 
uh, the other ones in the series, you know, because the rest of them are just very solid, but this one stands out as kind of having that resin part of it. So um, this one does work and it writes and functions and um, so kind of in comparison, I have, let's see, let me get this focus here. I have an, like a modern capless or vanishing point often is what it's referred to um, nowadays, um, in the United States at least it is. But this is kind of the the new modern take on kind of this. I don't have, there is another model that's kind of in between these two that's like a, a longer, skinnier, um, faceted barrel version. Um, I don't have one of those yet, but I'm sure eventually I will. So this one I got, I got, and it's got, it's in pretty solid shape, like the little capless thing right here has got like a little blue goober um, over the C. It's not like a scratch or really a discoloration in the in the sticker, um, but I'm going to see if I can get that off. You know, I'm not going to get too aggressive on it, but I might be able to get some of that off. But um, but yeah, so the, the internals, right, similarly, like... Um, so this bottom base part is is like all brass, you know, or coated in stainless steel or like sheathed in stainless. Um, but then this part of the barrel is is a plastic, so it's part of this as one big piece. And these older capless, um, th these are prone to because of this constant like clicking motion. You're putting tension. On these threads to extend the clip or extend the the nib what ends up happening is these end up kind of stripping out over time and ultimately what can happen is is this can just those threads can't actually hold that tension anymore on here so then it just every time you try and click it it goes and just kind of sorry I made a sound effect there but it kind of just falls apart um, and then you end up with a, a really kind of expensive vintage pen that you can't actually use anymore because those threads don't work. Um, the inside is pretty similar to that of a kind of modern capless, although it just like, it looks like something out of like a dystopian, <laughs> you know, movie or something like that to where it's like the paint's like kind of wearing off. And even on like mod, like really nice examples of this, I've noticed that these always tend to be kind of scratched up or whatever. Um, as far as I know, th these are not, uh, this pen is not compatible with new um, innards, you know, from a, from like a regular new capless. Let's see. So they look really, really similar, um, but I don't believe that they are interchangeable they might be I don't know I've been too scared to try it but they look pretty darn close um, actually probably not see because these are these are kind of in different alignment there so you're learning something as I am here so um, very similar nib sizes you know it's like pilot doesn't again doesn't really change a whole lot over the years which is pretty cool um, but anyway, yeah, so this one is kind of the, I guess you could say like the the show showpiece of the collection um, and probably one of the harder ones to come by it seems. So, um, but anyway, yeah, so these are these are some pens that I've, I've definitely fallen for pretty hard and, you know, they, they definitely take some doing as far as getting uh, a collection together, but, you know, if you you get obsessed enough like I do um, it's definitely something that's totally achievable uh, it just might take a couple years you know so I would probably put this collection building of mine at about um, you know e easily to two years of putting this together so I uh, just got to be patient and try and keep an eye out for them so yeah let me know if anybody has any questions about these because um, they are super un unique and a bit different um, but yeah, I just wanted to definitely share the set with the uh, with the community, and because I don't know if there's really anybody that's done a video like this of this particular series, and uh, I thought it'd be fun to do that. So, 
All right, thanks.